So the Nevada caucus is quickly approaching, and we're already seeing signs that we cannot trust the Nevada State Democratic Party. Now, maybe they just are completely oblivious and don't care about the optics, but for those of you who missed it, they just hired a Pete Buttigieg organizer as the voter protection director. Her name is Emily Goldman, and they assure us that she's not going to have anything to do with the upcoming caucus. She's going to be working on the general election stuff. Um, regardless, we have to have all the information that we possibly can attain. And I think part of that, doing our research and being vigilant, is looking back to the history of how these parties have treated progressives. And back in 2016, if you'll recall, the Nevada State uh, Party Convention was one of the dirtiest things I have ever seen, possibly um, in the modern history of electoral politics in the United States. They absolutely, positively had nothing but contempt for Sanders supporters, and they wore it on their sleeves and weren't even uh, embarrassed at all. And, you know, the reason why they were bolstered is because they had the media backing them up. So as we head into Nevada... We have to do what we can to be hyper vigilant and protect ourselves against any shenanigans. Now, I don't know what that means. Maybe that means we take extra notes. Maybe that means we screen cap everything and we keep a record, a paper trail. I don't know what that means, but you need to know this information. You need to remember what happened back in 2016 so that way we can anticipate what will happen to us in 2020. So the Nevada State Democratic Party does not like Bernie Sanders and his supporters. So, you know, if this uh, this new hire of Emily Goldman has you skeptical, if the optics don't look good, watch this video that I put out from 2016 where I talked about this at length, about what they did to brazenly screw over Bernie Sanders supporters. All hell broke loose at last Saturday's Nevada Democratic Convention. Lots of shenanigans went on. Effectively, the process was rigged to benefit Hillary Clinton, uh, and there are many examples as to why this is the case. So first and foremost, more than 50 Bernie Sanders delegates were just denied delegate status for arbitrary reasons. Uh, another example is they held vocal votes, uh, and regardless of what people chose, the DNC chair in Nevada, Roberta Lang, unilaterally decided to implement the rules of her choice. And when Bernie Sanders supporters were really aggravated at this and were yelling and whatnot, well, they brought in armed guards to get them to settle down and whatnot. Because who would have thought that they would be frustrated with the rules, right? So anyways, to give you guys an example of just part of the shenanigans that went on, so here's a video of them doing a vocal vote for yay or nay, and clearly the nays have it, but Roberta Lang, she told everyone that her ruling was not debatable and cannot be challenged. Take a look. Now, to make matters even worse, after this happened, Senator Barbara Boxer came in from California, and she was really condescending to Bernie Sanders supporters, and she began to antagonize them. Take a look. Now, when you boo me, you're booing Bernie Sanders. Go ahead. You're booing Bernie Sanders. Let's hear it for Hillary Clinton. All right. We have the vote. We have the voice. We have victory. Keep on booing and boo yourselves out of this election. Go ahead. Yeah. And now after that, she continued to be antagonistic because as she was leaving, she was blowing kisses to the crowd in a really sarcastic, condescending way. And then after that, she went on MSNBC and talked about how she was so afraid for her life when she was sitting there antagonizing the crowd. I did fear for my safety, and I fortunately had a lot of security around me. And so this is what our democracy has come to. Now look, I'm only giving you a small snapshot as to what happened. I'll put full stories to what happened in the description box, but what I actually want to talk about 
is the aftermath. Because effectively, what we saw was that the process was rigged in favor of Hillary Clinton. This isn't the first time this happened this election cycle. The Democratic establishment has overwhelmingly been in the tank for Hillary Clinton since the beginning. We've seen this time and again with DNC Chair Debbie Do Anything for Hillary Wasserman Schultz. And now we see it with Roberta Do Anything for Hillary Lang. So... It's really frustrating that they have the gall to do this and then get angry and bring in armed guards when people get upset that they're rigging the process in front of their very eyes and don't like it when they are antagonized. But the shenanigans that ensued after this may be more outrageous than what happened at the convention. So is it the case that the Democratic establishment are sorry and are being apologetic for what they did at the convention? Well, they're actually blaming Bernie Sanders supporters and are claiming that they were violent at the convention. Uh, and also, they're focusing on what Bernie Sanders supporters did to the DNC chair afterwards. So, the official complaint that the Nevada State Democratic Party filed to the DNC after they rigged the convention is as follows. We write to alert you to what we perceive as the Sanders campaign's penchant for extra-parliamentary behavior. Indeed, actual violence in place of democratic conduct in a convention setting. And furthermore, what we can only describe as their encouragement of and complicity in a very dangerous atmosphere that ended in chaos and physical threats to fellow Democrats. Indeed, the threats to the chair of the Nevada State Democratic Party are ongoing at time of this writing as Sanders activists have posted her cell phone and home address online and have bombarded her with threats to her life and the safety of her family, the situation had reached a point where public safety could no longer be assured and that the proceedings had to be concluded in very short order, hence the reason why they decided to bring in armed guards. Now I'll put the rest of the complaint also in the description box, uh, and essentially what they're saying is that Bernie Sanders supporters are violent, they were being violent, they resorted to violence, uh, they claimed that there were chairs that were thrown and whatnot, uh, and they're just overwhelmingly focusing on Bernie Sanders supporters, they're not taking into account the fact that they rigged the process and that they caused some of this outrage, not at all. So now the media, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is claiming that chairs were thrown, for example, that's one of the acts of violence that went on, but unfortunately for them, there is zero evidence of this. There is one video of a guy picking up a chair, but he puts it back down and then he hugs someone. Uh, so that's bogus and even Snopes debunked this. It's fake, but yet the DNC chair as well as the Nevada State Democratic Party keep perpetuating this myth because they want Bernie Sanders supporters to look bad. They want them to look violent. They want you to look away at what they did and focus on what Bernie Sanders supporters did. Now, of course, the media is having a field day with this. Here's a taste of what they've been saying. People wave signs, they boo, they yell. Chairs being flipped, no, first of all, show me, of no, show me one. Saying that show she's me, being threatened. Well, hold on, let, let's separate the two things. Since Barbara Boxer politic... said she feared for her life. Shouting. It's not nothing. You can't Wait tell Barbara Boxer that she, when Barbara Boxer, it, who is a lioness in the Senate, uh, says she feels threatened, that's okay? So, no. Uh, Sally, I'm going to begin you. with you because I know that you've been an, an avid Bernie Sanders supporter since the beginning, but we've now got a grandmother who is worried about her five-year-old grandchild. Uh, we've got a woman who says her marriage might be on the brink because of Bernie Sanders supporters. We have a U.S. senator who just said on live national television that she feared for her life at a Democratic convention. Where is this going, Sally? Well, okay, first, let me let me just say one thing I think it's important to say, which is I know we in the media often love sort of drama and false equivalencies, and in, in no way, shape, or form is this akin to what's happening in the Republican Party. There you have leading Answer figures. Answer the question. I don't want to talk about the okay, Republicans. No, I want to say, I want, I'm going to the Republicans in about 10 minutes, but right, I need 10 but full minutes to, to get down Democrats on this I mess. It is ugly. It is Foul. Okay, wait, wait. Someone who is I... fearing for her life. Yes. Where is this going? Now, there is evidence that someone did dox DNC Chair Nevada, Roberta Lang's information, her home address, her cell phone, and she has received really threatening voicemails and really odd text messages. Here's some examples. So someone texted her and said, hey, bitch, we know where you live, where you work, where your kids eat, where your kids go to school and grandkids. And another person called her the biggest cunt in politics next to Clinton. And she was also texted pictures of a guillotine. This is really just troubling. And it goes without saying, I wholeheartedly condemn violence. I never ever condone violence. I'm in favor of nonviolent protest. I'm in favor of actually using constructive means to accomplish political objectives. So if you are someone who did participate in this, then you're being counterproductive. This is wrong. 
please don't do this. You don't have to do this. We can win on the merit of our argument. So the wrongness of what they did and the harassment that she's received is immoral. But that doesn't mean that she's not also guilty for doing what she did at the Nevada State Convention. Now, here's the thing about this. If you are receiving all these death threats and whatnot, please do not post them online. Report them to the Nevada police. And I'm guessing what they would instruct you to do is to stay inside your house. Uh, don't send them online because when you publicize this, then you make matters worse. And furthermore, part of me wants to pull out my tinfoil hat and question the validity of this based on her actions. Because if you're really afraid for your life, and look, I'm not going to say challenge her, but if you are, then you don't want to publicize this. You, you want to make sure that you stay out of the spotlight for a few days. You want to report everything that you see to the police. But if she's releasing them online, then there's evidence that she didn't report them to the police because they probably wouldn't allow her to release this. And furthermore, we know about how David Brock is paying $1 million for Clinton trolls to uh, correct the record on Bernie Sanders. So who knows if this is something orchestrated by them. But regardless if this is true or false, again, let me just state that I never condone violence. I'm a humanist. I believe that even these threats, if they're baseless, just the psychological impact that they have, it's wrong. And you should never do it. Okay, you can try to challenge Roberta Lang's legitimacy through legal means. You can try to challenge her and sign petitions and get her to step down. But if you send her threats, then that's just wrong. And I wholeheartedly condemn violence, as does Bernie Sanders. In fact, he stated, I condemned any and all forms of violence, including the personal harassment of individuals. Now, in spite of this condemnation, Roberta Lang is still demanding an apology from Bernie Sanders. Take a look. Not only were people talking when we were trying to run the convention and yelling and rushing the stage and throwing chairs and um, yelling for my death in the crowd, those are the kinds of things that have to be stopped in. Uh, what should you know, he say? How I've can he stop that? I have not received an apology. I, uh, uh, you know, I have not received anything from the Sanders campaign. I haven't seen anything that said that this should stop. So it's clear, Roberta Lang is against violence, as she should be, as any rational human being should be. Uh, but when asked about whether or not she had anything to say about the violence that Bernie Sanders' campaign had dealt with, so for example, there were gunshots fired into his campaign office, in Nevada and some of his staffers uh, houses were ransacked uh, she had nothing to say about this she didn't know what to say um, you are the state Democratic chairwoman and if this happened at a campaign headquarters in your state I would assume that there would be some uh, curiosity or concern enough to at least have someone in the office call well you know look um, it happened at 10 o'clock last night it's our office isn't open yet I haven't had any opportunity to um, take any steps forward you look I am concerned I'm concerned not only for my safety and what has happened to me, but for the safety of everyone involved. So here's the thing about responsibility. Is it the case that Bernie Sanders is responsible for condemning the actions of his supporters? Absolutely. Has he done that? Yes, he has. Does he need to apologize for the actions of his supporters? No, because his movement is very broad. He can't control the actions of his supporters. And if you claim that he does owe Roberta Lang an apology for actions that he can't control, well then, you're being incredibly unreasonable. Let me tell you why. So if that were the case, if Bernie Sanders is supposed to apologize to Roberta Lang for the actions of his supporters, I want an apology from Hillary Clinton because I've been tweeted to, I've been called homophobic slurs. Is Hillary Clinton going to apologize to me? I also would like an apology from Donald Trump because one of his supporters told me that I should be deported to Mexico. I'm not Mexican, <laughs> so you can't deport me to Mexico. But I mean, nonetheless, it's xenophobic, right? I'd like an apology. So the point I'm trying to make is that if you're going to demand an apology from a candidate for the actions of their supporters, then they're not going to have much time to campaign because they're going to be here all day because every single candidate has a proportion of their supporters that are just immoral, that are assholes. Okay. And Bernie Sanders is no different. But what counts is that he condemned the violence. That's what you have to do. You can't encourage it like Donald Trump where he said, I'll give you money or I'll pay your legal fees, fees if you punch that guy. That's wrong. Bernie Sanders didn't do that. He took responsibility for the actions of his supporters and condemned any violence and harassment. I don't know what more you want. It just 
proves evidence of the fact that you may be using this as an opportunity to further vilify Bernie Sanders. Just like you're the victim of online harassment, Roberta, Bernie Sanders supporters are also victims. They're victims of a political system that favors the billionaire class. They're victims of political violence against them. We're victims of an oligarchic state where only special interests get to dictate policy outcomes and our voices have a statistically non-significant impact on policy. That's from a study from Princeton University by Dr. Gillens and Page that found that only the business class, only the billionaire class, actually have a say when it comes to policies that are passed. That's wrong. The political system victimizes people every single day. So what you did, Roberta Lang, is further perpetuate the victimization of the working poor class. You made our, quote, democratic process even more undemocratic than it already is, just so that way you can help Hillary Clinton get a couple extra delegates so that way she can get in office and do the bidding of her rich billionaire donors. That's wrong. You're guilty too. Take responsibility for it. Now, I'm not saying that you deserve to be threatened for what you did. Nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves to have their information doxxed and to be threatened and to have their family threatened, okay? That's wrong. That's immoral. I condemn that. But you're also guilty. You cheated. You are a cheater. You cheated for Hillary Clinton when you didn't even have to. She could technically lose all the remaining states left by a certain margin and still become the nominee. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.